Hello everyone, welcome to day number three officially of the UEFN challenge where we're trying to get rich with UEFN. And today we've finally moved on into this building phase of the map. Today's pretty straightforward. All we did was kind of gray box and lay out how the actual map is gonna be. As you can see the actual, this is the lobby area of the map, but this is what I came up with. So we have the player spawns here. They are all gonna be facing this way. We're gonna have 16 players in the game. And then behind that and to the sides, we're gonna have all the main weapons. The weapons that pretty much anyone can get right off the bat. And then what we're gonna have is we're gonna have the VIP slash secret weapons right here, straight in front of the player. I kind of did it this way. That way people, when they first join the map, the first thing they see is this area right here, which they're like, oh, that's cool. What is this? Rather than having it be somewhere completely hidden and they never really look at it, which this is going to be one of our main retention mechanics. So we definitely want this to be in a place where it's really visible for the players. After that, we have cosmetics here to the sides. Um, as I kind of discussed previously, I want to have player banners and other cosmetics like elimination effects. So we're going to have all of those here um, and also crosshairs potentially if we do do that in, in a future update. Over here we have our purchasable stuff, which are things like mythic weapons or any exotic weapons or superpowers or any lobby wide events. And then what I'm thinking is we're gonna have a second floor that kind of goes all the way over here in this half moon shape. And here are the stairs or going up. I didn't draw the second floor yet because I'm not really 100% sure what I'm gonna put there. But when we get there, we're gonna flesh that out really quick. The actual arena itself is just a huge box that's 40 by 40. This is tiles, by the way. And then it just has walls on all sides that's 20 tiles high. So let me jump into UEFN and show you guys what this currently looks like. Okay, so we're inside of the editor here and this is more or less the area that I've outlined. I also put these kind of scaffolding little pillar thingies. As for the actual layout, you can see here that I've kind of blocked out and gray boxed the entire area here. As you can see here, we have the second floor. This is where the main weapons will be. This, this entire kind of half circle area will be where the main weapons are going to be. Cosmetics and the purchasables are going to be somewhere here. So th those are the ba two basic tasks I had for today. And then the third one was building out this verse gameplay script boil plates. So what I'm gonna have is some game manager, player manager, and UI manager. Okay, so how the general flow of how I design my games with Verse is, what I have here is a source folder, which in here I have all of the Verse files and the Verse folders that just to organize all my Verse scripts better rather than having everything in, in, in the root directory. And what I have here is first of all, this game manager class. What this does is it basically references every other ma major manager in the game. And by manager, I mean basically any class that is in charge of a specific area of the game. For example, rendering the UI, this would be delegated to the UI managers. Dealing with all the players, that's inside of the player manager. And what I do is I simply make an editable of these verse scripts that I place in the world and then just basically put everything inside of here. So the reason these are optionals is because supposedly when you make an editable of any verse class or any creative device for that matter, what the game, what UEFN needs to do when cooking the actual project is it needs to create an extra instance of this player manager or whatever this editable attribute is and that slows the cooking time by however complex the editable is here. But because this is a false value, then it doesn't need to create anything. It just creates a false value. It also gives me an extra layer of seeing whether or not these manager classes have been initialized because here I check if these have been correctly referenced, then I can just print out then that this player manager was set or it wasn't set or whatever. After that, really what this game manager does is one pull general game events like players joining and then players leaving. And then what I have is an init player and a remove player function. So in here, every major manager is gonna have their own init player function where we pass in the brand new joining player and this is where the player gets initialized. The reason I like keeping all of this in here is because we can easily trace where the player is being initialized. And if there's something like the UI is missing, then we can just go here and check if the, if the UI manager has initialized a player, which again, really helps for debugging. And we have a antagonistic remove player function here, which basically does the opposite of the initialized player. This is when a player leaves, I'll remove player. With that out of the way, one advice I do wanna give you guys if you are making a multiplayer game is one thing we did we did decide on when I first created the template was that I want to have fast respawns, meaning when a player gets eliminated, they respawn as fast as possible. So there's no downtime in between respawns. Now, the problem with fast respawns is you can either do it with drag event binding function here, respawn player, 
which will basically try to spawn a player as fast as possible. It's not as fast as the verse version, which has player that respawn, which is pretty much instant. The only issue with the verse one is that this was a while back, but I had issues where the respawn function wasn't a true respawn, meaning that yes, their character reappeared, but some of the functionality that's tied to a respawn didn't apply. For example, when you respawn inside of a mutator zone, automatically the mutator zone should register that you know you've spawned inside of a mutator zone and all the effects should be applied but with the verse effect that basically never happened so if you respawn someone with verse this mutator zone would literally not affect a player and when we have crucial things like not disabling weapon fire inside of this mutator zone you can see why that's a bit catastrophic so what i have instead are these respawn channels which what i do inside of the verse script here is basically transmit an event to this channel and then pass in the player. What that does is I've linked every player spawner to a specific channel, for example, this one, and this literally just listens to whenever this gets transmitted, which is when a player needs to be respawned, and it'll call the respawn direct event binding function. So this basically acts as a proxy to speed up the respawn process. But one thing that's kind of annoying here is that these are spawners nine, 10, these go from nine all the way to 16 over here. And then these ones are kind of flipped around like 10, 11, uh, 16, and then this one's all the way nine for some reason. So I kind of want to rename these. So a quick thing you can do here is if I want to rename these starting from nine all the way to 16, what I could do is I could select them in the order I want. So I could do this one, then this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. You can then either right click and then go where it says edit and then rename selected actors. Or what you can also do is you can press shift F2 and this will open up this batch renamer thing. Now here, there's a couple of things you could do. Um, my personal favorite is if I'm just re-switching the numbers around, for example, if this was like randomly numbered, what I could do here is I could go into the regex field, which will which will take a regular expression string. This is a little more advanced, but, but what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna type backslash D. This basically says find everything that's a number, which in this case are all the tens, all the twelves, all the nines or whatever, and rename them to, in this case, nothing. So if I put B, this will put B wherever the numbers were. But in this case, I don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is just press auto increment here. Then this will automatically increment them. As you can see here, zero, one, two, three, but I wanna start at nine, so what you can do here is just go start and then press nine and this will do nine all the way to 16 and now these should be correctly numbered from nine all the way to 16. all right now to actually test all that is done let me jump in here and respawn real quick and boom fast respawn and as you can see i have the double moving speed from the mutator zone so i am effectively i effectively can't build and if I had a weapon, well, I would not be able to shoot. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Really simple one, just getting all our stuff done. Tomorrow we're on the map a little more, and if I have something cool to share, then I'll definitely share that with you guys. With that being said, thanks for watching, and yeah, take care, guys.